Church in Balfour, South Africa. Hallelujah. So good to be with you today on this Sunday morning. Uh, trying to do this around the same time we would have normally had church so that you'll get something timely from me as to how I feel this morning. And it's an overcast day today. The sun is not out. Uh, and it usually is here in South Africa. And I think that that kind of just speaks about the times that we're in. We're in a, a cloudy time. We're in a time that's hazy. Uh, we don't know what's coming down the pike, do we? We really don't know. Uh, you know, we're still in the midst of this lockdown here. Uh, today's April the 19th, 2020. And um, God gave me a little message here to speak to you about uh, guard the gates. Uh, I want you to look up Nehemiah 13, uh, verses uh, 10 to 22. And go ahead and read those verses. Uh, I won't have time to go over them now. I'm going to keep this message real short so that I'll be able to, uh, you know, put it up on all the different, maybe some of you are going to watch it by phone and stuff, and so the megabytes will be low. But uh, anyway, uh, Nehemiah didn't just rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. No, he also made sure that he guarded the gates. And he was good about stationing people at their posts. You know, when he came to Jerusalem, he even found out that the Levites were kicked out of the temple. The Levites were the ones that were supposed to be the priests. They were no longer doing their priestly work. They, they were sent back to their farmlands and they were tilling the soil. They weren't even in the ministry anymore. And Nehemiah said, look, this is not gonna, this isn't gonna go. So he brought them all back. He brought the Levites back. And it says in verse uh, 11, so I rebuked the officials, the ones that were in control, the powers that be at that time, and asked them, why is the house of God neglected? Then I called them together and stationed them at their posts. Talking about the Levites, he stationed them at their posts. And that's what God wants to speak to us today. He wants to station us at our posts. Each one of us has a place in God's plan. There's nobody, not a person in the world, that doesn't have a post. Amen. Isn't that great? You know, I was in the military for many years, and even a, a buck private, uh, somebody that's really the bottom of the barrel, he had a post. Whether he was a guard at the guard post or whatever he was doing, if he ha had KP duty. I, I did a little bit of KP duty. Uh, in the Gulf War, back in the uh, 9091 Gulf War. You know, I don't want to come home and tell people, hey, I was uh, cleaning pots and pans while some of the guys were in the front lines shooting and, you know, doing the real war thing. But at, we need everybody. We got people that are on the front lines. I was in a maintenance unit. So we maintained the tanks. We did a lot of the maintenance that, that kept the guys on the front line. So that's where, where our company was. Uh, we were just about 30 miles from the front line. So I know what it is. What God wants to tell you today is you're just to be stationed at your post and be ready. And the other key God wants to share is that Nehemiah, like I said, he, he stationed the people at the post. But he also told them to guard the gates. Guard the gates. Listen to what he says here. He said, Nehemiah said, In those days I saw men in Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in grain and loading it on donkeys together with wine, grapes, and figs, and all other kinds of loads. And they were bringing all of them into Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Therefore... I warned them against selling food on that day. Men from Tyre who lived in Jerusalem were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise and selling them in Jerusalem on the Sabbath to the people of Judah. What did, what did Nehemiah do when he saw this? He said, I rebuked the nobles of Judah 
that's the powers that be, he rebuked them, and said to them, what is this wicked thing you are doing desecrating the Sabbath day? Didn't your forefathers do the same thing so that our God brought all this calamity upon us and upon this city? Now you are stirring up more wrath against Israel by desecrating the Sabbath. Now listen to this. This is key here. Verse 19, Nehemiah chapter 13. When evening shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, before the Sabbath, when the evening shadows fell, I ordered the doors to be shut and not opened until the Sabbath was over. In other words, he shut the gates. The gates of Jerusalem were shut. Now, sometimes we have to shut the gates. Amen? Sometimes it's not meant for the gates always to be open. And that's the problem with a lot of the nations today. Uh, my homeland of America, we have the borders wide open, right? Uh, even in this country, a lot of the people from Northern Africa just come down over the borders. And what little jobs there are here, I mean, there's almost 30% unemployment as it is in South Africa. You know, these people come down and they even take what little bit of prosperity there is here. And yeah, Jesus loves everybody. We, we love everybody. But I mean, there is a time for a country to have sovereignty and to shut its gates. That doesn't mean we aren't to give foreign aid and bless other people and be a hand of goodness, but a nation will lose its identity. And Jerusalem was losing its identity. Not just that there were foreigners coming in, but what they were losing their spiritual identity by breaking the Sabbath. We just need to be in prayer because God is still on the throne. And we just need to, in the name of Jesus, just agree with me. Lord Jesus, we just come against this COVID-19. We come against this infection that's spread upon the world and spread upon South Africa. And we just plead the blood of Jesus, Lord God. We come against it in the name of Jesus. You are no longer welcome. Go back to the pit of hell where you came from. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, the devil's people, especially the devil, he doesn't mind this COVID-19 spreading around the world, causing chaos. He likes people being out of work, being depressed, committing suicide, whatever. But that's not God's plan. You know, God in the Garden of Eden gave us free will, whether we were going to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge or not. And we decided to eat it. So now we're living this whole thing out. But Jesus has a plan for us. If you read Revelations 21, it says that the gates in heaven will always be open. That's found in Revelations 21, verse uh, 25. Chapter 21, verse 25. The gates of heaven, because there will be no more darkness there. Right now, we live in a dark world, an evil world. Um, I'm going to close by saying that I really believe that God wants us to come together and to pray for each other. Lord Jesus, I just pray a blessing over my little church here in Balfour, South Africa. Bless each person, Lord, even those that haven't come in a while. Bless them and be with them. And I pray, Lord God, for South Africa. Lord God, that you'll grab a hold of the, of the powers that be, the, the different ones that are in charge, and shake them and show them the truth. And Lord, I just pray that this country will wake up this, I just pray for revival in South Africa, and I pray for revival in my home country of America. Bless the leaders there. Bless my president. I just pray a blessing over our leaders worldwide. Everyone needs wisdom, even in Europe and ch even Chinese, all these leaders. We just pray that God will give them wisdom in Jesus' name. I love you guys, and... Uh, 
Can't wait for this whole thing to be over so we can be back in church. Amen? God bless.